Ladies and gentlemen, we are live reacting right now. Let's jump into it. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Good morning, good evening, good time zone to you all, and welcome to a uh, beautifully balmy day. Here Can you all hear Bell, pretty good? Washington, here at Bungie HQ. Didn't realize it would be that alliterative. Uh, welcome to our stream that's going to go ahead and showcase a little bit of what's to come in Act 2 of Episode All right, let's see what's all about. Before I go ahead and kick things off. Um, the eagle-eyed guardians among you have probably noticed a little QR code down here in this general direction. Sorry. Uh, if you go ahead and give it a scan, our friends over at the Bungie Foundation are going to be running a seventh column chaos tournament, and you have a chance to get involved, help them raise some funds, and do some good. So there you go. go ahead and do yourself a favor, give that a scan, learn a little bit more about what they got, maybe give them a follow on Twitter while you're there out you there. There you go. I cranked uh, the volume up. Got a lot of cool information that's on the way, but... Speaking of cool information on the way, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Uh, Please give us something good. We have the distinct opportunity to go ahead and tell you a little bit about the stuff that's going to be arriving with Act 2 of Episode Echoes. But worry not, as always, I'm joined by an all-star cast of Oh, I know my purchase is justified. Uh, I'll go ahead and dive right into it, starting with uh, the individual right here to my left, the incomparable. We got Allison Chris Proctor. That's a bad sign. Hello. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing all right. Thank you for asking. No one ever asked me back. Chris. More people should. Yes, yeah. thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, for the uninitiated at home that may not have met you or are just kind of meeting you for the first time outside of the Vidoc potentially. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and what you do here at Bungie? Yeah, my name is Allison Lures. I'm the narrative director for Destiny 2. Uh, it's my job to work oh. with the team that creates our stories and characters. Uh, we're in charge of So you're of who to blame for some of the bad story we had in Lightfall. Uh, I have cried a lot in our game, so thank you. You're welcome. You and yours are doing some heavy lifting. You're Even welcome. my black and dead heart has gone ahead and had some feelings. So Happy to be of service. We appreciate it. Uh, and of course, sitting right next to Allison is the That's one of Mr. Ryan Harris, uh, senior activities designer here at Bungie. Ryan, welcome. Hey. Uh, for the folks that story also not have designer your, and uh, weapons have played your uh, your activities without realizing it, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here? Yeah. So my name is Ryan Harris. I'm a senior activity designer here at Bungie, and folks may know me from season 20 Battlegrounds, uh, Seventh Inspire, and yeah, I work on the it was all right. seasonal team making that. Battle Spire was all right. Play day after day. Excellent. I've spent a lot of time in Sabbath Inspire, so thank you for your hard work. Welcome. Uh, it was, it was all right. Next to him, friend of the show. If you've tuned into our Into the Light streams, you've met him before a couple of times. Chris Proctor. Uh, the one and only senior design, a senior design lead here at Bungie, the one and only Chris Proctor. Yep. Chris, Everyone back. knows Chris Proctor. Sammy, how are you today? I am doing so good. Thank <laughs> you. This is everything's coming up Millhouse. This is going great. Uh, for the folks that may not have had a chance to tune into the previous streams, uh, if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about who you are and what you do here at Bungie. He makes the weapons. Yeah, folks might be familiar with my work on the weapons team. I was weapons feature lead for four and a half years. Uh, I'm now the sandbox. We're going to get nerfs, chat. Which means I help out the sandbox team with any issues they're facing mm -hmm. and uh, help uphold that critical sandbox quality bar. Mm -hmm. it's a, it's a exciting quality. Too, so thank you and yours for all of your hard work. Uh, now, let's go ahead and get ready to go ahead and dive into some stuff about uh, Act 2. But first things first, uh, we've obviously been listening to the feedback of our fans, uh, in particular, the kind of weekly rollout of all yep. the different stuff that's happened through Episode 1. Uh, with Episode 2, you guys are looking to try something a little bit different. Isn't that right? That's Allison? right. Yeah, yeah, we've been listening to the fans and listening to feedback, uh, and we agree it's time for a change. Uh, so we're going to do a trial of something new in Act 2. We're going to be dropping all three beats of the... Uh, uh, acts at once. Uh, so we'll be dropping all the three beats for Act 1 at the same time, all the three beats for Act 2 at the same time, all the same beats uh, for Act 3. Uh, Whoa. And the goal is to encourage players to play at their own pace. Uh, nice. to Thank get you, all of that God! Play, if that's what they're looking for, yeah. or to meter it out over uh, whatever pace they want to play at. Um, but yeah, so we're going to get a shot go! in, act, in uh, Episode 2. Excellent, uh, that's right, yeah. See how it goes over. Yes, definitely. And to that, uh, to that same end, uh, when Let's I go! Episode two, I did two, rolls around uh, make sure and let us know what you guys think, but whether you're a, a Netflix-style binger like myself or you want to go to the comic book store each week to go ahead and pick up the new issue... W! W the chat is going, going crazy. Let's go. Brio, uh, but make sure to read it. Uh, more about it is going to be in the Excellent. Okay. We won in that, that change, baby. We won that change. Uh, that change. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at... also what got us That's the today. biggest so W, chat. Oh, my God. I'm so glad. Act 1 has kind of concluded its main story beats. Now, those at home that may not have had a chance to... What about the missions? Missions. I'm so waiting. Would you mind catching us up to what the uh, what events got us here today? Sure, uh, we'll do the short version. Uh, great news, the witness is dead. 
We did we it. We did it. Yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. The uh, episodes are all <sighs> about the consequences of where we killed the witness yeah. and how. So when we killed the witness, all of that darkness, all of that memory, all of that energy collided with now, the light fix of the, the, the missions. Tell and me you're so going to fix the, the missions. that were inside of the witness, uh, which is not necessarily exclusively the precursor beings that are inside of it, mm. uh, collided with the light of the traveler uh, and made matter out of those memories. Uh, we call those echoes. Uh, and one of them launched out towards Nessus. Uh, and so we followed it to try and investigate see what this thing is uh, and when we got there uh, we managed to reunite with failsafe who you left you abandoned her uh, our okay AI girlfriend apparently okay. just so you know she's got yeah. the hots Thank for us you. she's very happy to see us uh, oh she's very we'll happy uh, so we've been exploring through Nessus um, and initially things are pretty fun what a fun cool lighthearted adventure uh, yeah. nothing bad's going to happen of course not of course not fail safes around uh, and the act ends with getting a little a little tease of like oh wait this isn't going to be a strictly lighthearted <laughs> adventure uh, Saint gets kidnapped uh, more than kidnapped kind of body controlled yeah. away from the rest of the group Group. Yeah. Uh, and as That's he's taken away, this being called not what I got from that, but okay, interrogating him uh, and demanding to kind of understand whether or not you are real, like whether Saint is the real Saint or not. It's unnerving and kind of weird, uh, and the vibes are only going to get darker from there. Even better, given that Saint has a rich history with effects, <clears throat> I'm sure everything is just going to go nice and peachy keen. Absolutely. Oh yeah. yeah. Nothing bad. No, so, of course not. And so now that we've we've washed away uh, that that veneer of everything's going to go great, Act Two now yes. is arriving as well. Uh, actual now, missions. There's plenty of stuff for folks to dive into. Tell me, there's actual missions. Go ahead and kick things off here with Act Two. Can you give us a little bit of a, a tease of what we're going to be checking out. Yeah, what the saint, what uh, saint heard when he <laughs> what was the being saint? kind of uh, controlled <laughs> really got to his head. Uh, we are going to be watching him wrestle with some questions that he's never acted, asked himself before. Yeah. Uh, and as we are trying to understand more about this conductor that he has encountered, uh, we are also going to be going back and revisiting one of Destiny's most storied locations very briefly. So the lore hounds out there are going to have a chance to feast. They're going to have a delicious time. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Bife, you're welcome. I don't know if this will warrant another 10 hours, but we'll leave that up to you. I got you, boo. <laughs> another okay. 10 hours. And now that, uh, that gives us the structure for what we're about to dive into. But we have now uh, the new activity that will be arriving as well. Ooh. Um, we're going to go ahead. We have some gameplay here to go ahead and dive into with the Echo Battlegrounds, the new three-player activity. Uh, Ryan, do you mind kind of telling us a little oh, bit Oh, they're about using the, the zone. It's Absolutely, such a good yeah. zone. So we'll be taking a look at... One of the oh, the new rocket sidearm! Engaging with this Dude, I want this sidearm um, so bad. So the first battleground here starts on in the cistern, the Wall of Flames, on Nessus, of course. It's and a battleground, okay. Through the Wall of Flames, checking out what's going on here as the Fallen have kind of like started hanging out and investigating the wealth of themselves. Yeah. Um, so players really here, like seeing, like noticing that the radial area of this lake has been drained. A lot of the areas kind of like revamped and like a <laughs> whisper that's interesting new. and players will be looking at the story of like how they kept the such good going, aim on that through uh, so for battleground one you're kind of like finding out and like locating where all this radial area is going to yeah um, battleground two you're seeing the actual flow and direction of all the radial there's no areas. shot they have no flinch on that sniper and battleground three you're actually seeing like where it's being directed to um so it's really trying to tell that story about the journey to the center of Nessus. Very exciting, yeah. So they all kind of have a way of interconnecting with each other as well. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I mean, it, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask, obviously the Vex have been our primary antagonist through this, um, but the, you know, the entrance here is being guarded by a pretty heavy contingent of Fallen. Oh, that's an, um, that's an Archon looking Fallen. fallen. Yeah, we haven't seen that model in a long time. That's an, a that's a Destiny 1 model. Uh, what yeah, the heck? The Fallen are here uh, because they're after the Echo 2. Uh, we want to think of these Echoes as kind of an arms race. Yeah. Uh, in the absence of the witness, there's a giant uh, power vacuum that has formed uh, where okay. there's no one in charge who's going to come out and take it on top. Yeah. So uh, the Fallen are here. They're chasing down the Echo as well and they're encountering the same thing that we are in that the Vex aren't really acting like the Vex normally do here. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing uh, some Vex start to act less like a collective and more like individuals. Um, yeah. There's one really fun lore tab where one of them What the heck? Yeah. Uh, so we're individuals. mostly Vex but yeah also Fallen are here too. It's cool to see the Vex right, mix match. Such a change. Like they've been more, I think you were saying like individualistic in yes. kind of a weird way, which is like the thing, the one thing the Vex don't totally. do. Totally. Yeah. It's the one thing that they don't do. Yeah. I'm going to do this right. just so we can see it better because some of the screen's uh, being cut uh, off. In, in, uh, in, in Act 2, 
uh, we're going to be able to see a little bit more of why they're specifically doing that. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, plenty to there dive we go. into. And also, um, with these with these battlegrounds uh, as well, Ryan, I know we were talking a bit before the show, but it seems like the main goal here was just for you guys to push yourselves, to really push the boundaries of what battlegrounds have been. Can you okay, I like the sound of that. Accomplished with this new set of battlegrounds in Act Two. Yeah, so for this set of battlegrounds, it's definitely our latest and well, greatest iteration of battlegrounds. As folks know, we love to hear that. Of two encounters and a final boss encounter. Okay. Um, so throughout the years, we kind of iterated on what a battleground is and how closely it resembles. I never noticed that was the case. I knew there's a boss. I really wanted to push it to be like, what is a battleground and what is a strike? Mm -hmm. it, I wanted it to be almost one of the same. So with these battle rounds itself, I, I wanted players to, well, of course, have enough enemies on screen to slay out at all times. Which yeah. is fantastic. That's fun. The combatant counts in these battle rounds as high as possible in some ranges of 40 enemies at a time on screen, um, which is quite a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> Love it, though. That's but, fun. Plenty for us to go ahead and check out. Plenty. Yeah. Especially and Grandmasters. Enough, that's going to be fun. Uh, opportunity for everyone in the fire team to use all their abilities, use Prismatic to the fullest extent, and always use their super on cooldown or Prismatic on cooldown when the opportunity arises. I, I want we love that. I feel like they have, they can just do everything and there's not just that one player soloing the entire right. encounter. So everyone is contributing to that. There's a lot of hype in chat you can yeah, see. I can imagine too, even with the, you know, the expanded sandbox that's been brought to us with the new abilities by way of prismatic or even the new weapons, which we'll start to check out here in just a little bit. Um, you know, what were some additional ways? I can imagine it probably wasn't just even more, but you guys were saying you were trying to make some some more of these mobs a bit more intense to go ahead and go Ooh, up against as well. Yeah. What? Um, so okay. with the telling the story of the Vex are like evolving and changing, we've, uh, well, I went ahead and modified an existing wyvern. I'm so sorry. Oh, um, they, no, so they harder. made the you, you wyverns will, harder? You engage with these wyverns in pairs. And they what? have a special new ability where they can uh, teleport. Um, no! Kind of this scary. sounds like pain! Yeah. Show up behind you, right? So they turn <laughs> they, wyverns they into are, halo they hunters. They travel in pairs. And I wanted players to really, like, be on the lookout for them and engage with them in... Yeah. Prioritize them as, that like, sounds terrifying. Yeah, when they are seen. They literally make wyverns yeah. the hunters yeah, of ha of, of destiny. Like, obviously, players will have a chance. Uh, the first two of these battlegrounds obviously arrive with the first week of Act Two, with the third one hitting on the second week. Um, but it's not even necessarily. I think something that was really cool is you you were mentioning earlier that you wanted to make these closer to a strike or kind of blur that line. Um, even you know. Uh, the, the second battleground is kind of like an all new experience in a lot of ways. It's not just going back to a part of the planet we've been to before. With it is some good news, Redfield. Yes, it is. Can you tell us what it was like kind of putting that together and sort of creating this journey to the center of Nessus? Yeah, so we really wanted to tell a story of well, a journey to the center of Nessus and. Okay, that that's neat. New geo, new art, new environment. Yeah. Ooh, so I like that. I like new, new, is new areas. New geo and layout. Um, and we really tried to our best to like carve out what that experience is and that as most folks know from battlegrounds uh, They usually run through a, a patrol and like a, maybe a new boss space or just a new encounter space uh, these battlegrounds really Push the boundaries of like hey this this is this is all new. This is completely new fresh um, No reused assets. We love like to hear it, it is yeah. almost the bosses were part of that exercise too, yeah. though. I think like we were talking love that I not, love not kind of I like seeing new content that isn't reused assets a brand new encounter with new mechanics and new kind of like ways to go ahead and push further into the boss fight. Mm -hmm. um, that's the most broad strokes way I can describe it. But obviously, you know, as the man who oh, there's it, a wyvern. A bit more about where's the other one? These new boss experiences as well for players. Oh, it's teleporting. Yeah, so one thing uh, back back to like what players know from battlegrounds. Holy crap! Well, I see it just teleporting. One plays a battleground and they come in groups of three or four. Um, players are like that is stupid. It is teleporting. That's going to be so annoying to deal with. Boss encounters, right. but for these battlegrounds, they're all unique bosses. They're all different. They're all challenging in their own ways, and they're just barely and just different, very yeah. different from one another. So that, that was the experience we're trying to hit here. Is uh, uh, Redfield? This is just seasonal content, so it's not like the hard mode stuff. Is, it'll yeah. be different. The boss encounter will be different. Uh, we'll, we'll be trying to tell a story with the boss encounter that you're engaging with. Okay. Um, I appreciate that. Community gates and engagements in that boss encounter in different ways, um, be it with. Um, just telling a story while you're engaging the boss or like a damage window. Oh, is that the boss? No damage immunities at all. Where the oh, it is the boss. With a boss that has the, the largest health pool I've placed on a boss ever. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe. Yeah, for we'll now. See.
Okay. Plenty of chances to go ahead and test out those uh, those still hunt accuracy or the, each individual's uh, accuracy with still hunt rather I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, they know it's too good. Shotgun on me for a very good reason. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, there's obviously a ton of stuff to check out in that regard. But I think I'd be remiss if we didn't also talk a bit more, uh, kind of about what we're seeing on screen in in some way. Is uh, Chris, we've got some new um, weapons that are going to be arriving with this act as well. And nerfs. Uh, Tell me we're getting nerfs. I know it's coming. More about kind of maybe even this one. We're I don't want to hear it, but I know it's coming. Ones as well, isn't it? Uh, yeah, this is the aberrant action. So good. I can't wait to side craft this thing. Side arms. You love yep. to hear it. Yep. So First, good. Uh, solar rocket sidearm, and it's a banger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the role that uh, we're showing here is uh, heel clip incandescent, which is of probably, course. It synergizes super well with solar sub. It is yeah. the god yeah. roll. The one that does that, the best. Um, just to say, it, the art for these weapons is awesome. Mm -hmm. like, the weapons it's so good. Out of the park. Uh, this one in particular has some nice touches. God, aim down sights with it. Yeah. Uh, like it's little, so good. Animation there. It's so good. <laughs> Pretty neat. It's gonna be addictive, um, honestly. It's got a very Vex Mythic class feel. It's the so God roll. They did that intentional because like, everyone's gonna go for that roll. So I'm particularly fond of Pugilist and Demolitionist. Yeah. Because you get uh, kills so fast with these uh, rocket sidearms yeah. that regenerating your ability energy as you're doing that. Uh, That's yeah, true. It keeps you armed to the teeth at all times. Yeah. Never hurts. I think uh, that's his way of saying got, nudge, uh, nudge. New, uh, arc heavy burst pulse, pulse rifle, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And the in, uh, Corrasion um, arc heavy burst pulse rifle. Yeah. Uh, another one in this season. Ooh, so. okay. It has Volt and Shot, yeah, too. Is, uh, we introduced this subfamily. With and high impact polish. rounds, too. Yeah, what the heck? The third one of these. Uh, the role that we've got here, high impact reserve is left column. Also, Our reserve, sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. And Volt Shot right column. Yeah. That's, that's two damage one. perks. Uh, I would also look at uh, getting Frenzy right column. This, uh, high impact reserves is great, but it doesn't give you any stats. So having uh, frenzy gives you a bit of damage. Yeah, and frenzy on well. it. Very high uptime. Really great. Dude, yeah. this is gonna yeah, be my favorite your, freaking uh, weapon to use. Bolt shot frenzy so sounds like a PV uh, GM. Well, it's probably not too bad to have one. Blessing. Stacked perks on it, frankly. Yeah. I, I can see Volt shot doing a lot of untold damage. Just. Oh, I see why they're using whisper in this in this mission. That's a pretty juiced in PVP as well. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. There you go, PvP players. Rejoice. You got a new uh, toy, too. Uh, and then, uh, in addition to that, an old favorite is going to be making its return. Wait. Saints tried and true favorite shotgun. Perfect Paradox is coming back as well. From yeah. yeah. What, what makes it good, back, though? That's the problem. Uh, along with a bunch of other... Rapid fires are pretty mid. ...dropping in this act. And yeah, got all of the perks that you know and love from the original. Yeah. Uh, plus a bunch of new ones, plus the new origin traits. Uh, cast no shadows, mm -hmm. um, which if you're doing a melee build, just synergizes really nicely with it. So, yeah. I mean, one two, uh, one two punch. Left column, and then uh, trench barrel if you're just doing damage with weapon, yeah. or one two punch if you're doing a melee build. Yeah. Hunters. It's, it's a ton of fun and fits in really well with the rest of Saints Arsenal. Yeah, mm -hmm. we combination blow hunters are about to have a very good time. Oh, I can yeah. already tell, honestly, <laughs> as if we weren't already. Uh, ah. no, it's so with some new additions to the weapon sandbox, uh, there's also some new, um, a new row, pardon me, of perks unlocking on the seasonal artifact as well, isn't that right? Right, yeah, yeah. so uh, each act we're adding a new row. Okay. Um, so this is five new artifact mods, and with these we're really leaning into sniper rifles and solar damage. Yeah. Um, so... Sniper rifles, okay. In a, in a second. Oh yeah. So it, the, the, the fire team here, uh, obviously, is a little bit of their hands full. And also, uh, everyone in chat, please give a shout out. To why the solar, people, though? We just had solar. Here, ...who are doing the proverbial heavy lifting, mm -hmm. carrying us through this activity as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, anti-barrier sniper is coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, thank God. That's so yeah, good. This, this yeah. There's been, been a lot of fun. buzz about that. Oh, my There's God. That's so good. On the new seasonal artifact. Yeah. That is and going to be my new toy. Barrier champions. And, uh, like, you can also go through phalanx shields, all sorts of shields. It's yeah. Like, oh, my God. I love that. It's so bad for the hive knights that set up so defiant with their shields. It's like, huge. Sorry, not going to go well with you. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then scavenger mods so you can keep those special ammo sniper rifles fed. Yeah. Um. Moving on, incendiary rifle rounds. Yeah, so if you've got a what? sniper rifle, and I can think of a couple. We've seen Whisper of the Worm here, but there's also Still Hunt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> really these uh, you're scorching targets with this artifact mod, and then if we move on to the next one, um, once you build up enough scorch stacks and you have that ignition, it will do increased damage in a higher radius. Uh, but why solar, though? Strong. And not only that, but we're adding uh, this other artifact mod yeah. for sniper rifles, which increases damage with every precision hit. So... Uh, if you're landing like crit after crit on a boss with Whisper or Still Hunt or your favorite legendary solar sniper rifle, yeah. um, 
Yeah, you're going to be nice. Okay. Going to be I was just say, I whisper of the worm mains are just going to be feasting. Oh yeah. <laughs> Your next. Yeah, episode, might be worth it's using. About to be just a symphony of whispers of the worm, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, Which we'll is, see. Uh, not a bad way to spend some time. Uh, also, this is uh, as I was looking through kind of the additional buffs that were going to be added. Uh, so with with the arrival of uh, Act Two, okay, obviously Solstice will be a part of that. And we'll touch on that a little bit later here. Ooh, Solstice here. Um, but with the arrival of Solstice, you guys are also working on a new balance update as well. Yeah, uh, covers weapons. Here it armor, is. Covers abilities. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kick off with perhaps a uh, an update that's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, as a as a dead man's tail main, uh, the Tex Scout rifles are getting a pretty solid PVE buff across the board. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, we've seen that uh, the legendary and exotic aggressive scout rifles have been lagging a bit behind in uh, damage output. They they suck. Mm -hmm. So we're bumping that by thirty percent, which uh, puts them like just ahead of the current leaders for uh, uh, scout rifles. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. They're a ton of fun. Like they hit really hard. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm so excited. Thirty uh, percent. Just like hit firing guys from across the map, but I gotta tell you, I'm looking for any excuse I can to to keep dusting off Dead Man's tail. Yeah. Fighting Lion has taken his place recently, but just as a temporary thing, it's okay. Holy uh, crap! Thirty percent. That's uh, huge. Aggressive scout rifle, which you should keep an eye out for. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I I haven't spent as much time with that as I ought to, honestly. I've been mostly hanging out with Lost Signal. Speaking of of Fighting okay. Lion, but this isn't time for Andy to to share his loadouts necessarily. Uh, in that's addition, another live stream. That's another live stream, yeah. that's right, yeah. That's just that's just <laughs> me tweeting into the void and being like, Fighting Lion. Uh, the Fighting Lion subreddit is probably very happy right mm -hmm. now, so shout out to all of them. Uh, in addition to that, an old favorite of mine as well, speaking of, of some of the classics, uh, Ariana's Vow is gonna be getting a pretty sizable buff against- Wait, uh, it's already been buffed well. though. It yeah, already does so a lot of damage. Had, had a bunch of uh, changes to exotic weapons and how they interact with barrier champions. Mm -hmm. And Ariana's Vow fell a bit behind, so we've bumped its damage substantially. 67%. Holy crap! Most difficulties it will break barrier champion shields in two shots, yeah. which makes its ammo economy like much more valuable. Right. Yeah. And it had a pretty big uh, rework recently, uh, and this just makes it that much stronger. Yeah. Always a good time to go ahead and have that sitting on your hip, honestly. 67%? Uh, in particular that you wanted to speak to while we were here? Uh, obviously, all this will arrive on Bungie.net later, but... Uh, That's well, huge! Here, if you got any more on your mind that you'd like they to want you to use yeah, Ariana's Val. Focus in this act, uh, we really wanted to improve their ease of use a bit more in PvE. Mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest problems is when you're like trying to land crits on the witness or something, and you're taking a bunch of damage, right. you're getting flinched off target a lot. Uh, so we've gone in and halved the flinch from PvE enemies. Oh, yeah. thank God! That's a big one. Yeah. Uh, that is so a, huge. A little bit of foreshadowing, but uh, we've gone in and removed the penalties from Adept mods. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of setting the stage for wow. a larger set of mods that we'll be dropping in a future release. Not okay, so yeah. Adept mods no longer have negatives. For everyone out there it's well, huge. Yeah. Um, actually, and also we were talking a bit before the show too, but uh, the, the, there's going to be some armor tuning as well, isn't there as well? Oh, uh, the mods, I believe. The uh, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. So if, if you do a lot of raiding, you're probably familiar with the reserves mod swapping shenanigans that you can do. This uh -oh. is sort of fiddly and annoying for players. Um, we don't think it's a balance issue, uh, but it is irritating. We didn't want players to have to do it. So now, when you switch your reserves mods back off, uh, it'll bring your total reserves back down to their current cap. Uh, and to balance that out, we've increased reserves for special and heavy weapons uh, across the oh. board. Uh, okay. It varies per weapon type, but it's in the 10 to 15 percent range. Okay, so it's a trade-off. Uh, okay. In addition to that, if you do like running reserves mods permanently, we've reduced their cost by one. Uh, you'll note that we're nice. discounted mods from the artifact. That's a fair uh, trait. I think that's a fair. We knew the nerf was coming. That's fair. Oh, really? That's really fair. Very nice. All right. So build crafters, you've all been made aware. Now's a chance to start tweaking <laughs> those those variables in your spreadsheets across the board. <clears throat> uh, very exciting. Okay, uh, a lot of stuff to dive into. Uh, yeah, I would say that's very also fair. Got, um, a brief, quick preview uh, of some stuff that's going to be arriving with Solstice. Now I know I didn't our, hear any other nerfs so. though. Hard at work in the background, but very briefly, I wanted to make sure that as a part of the show, we took a look at the armor sets that are going to be arriving with Solstice. So, as a reminder, Psst, all right, give me good juice. Here. I need to know some good juice here. Two. Uh, should be a pretty good time for you guys to dive into. We'll have more information soon, but you can take a look here and see kind of the, I don't know, old timey pilot race car driver. Maybe yeah. I'm just channeling my old inner race car driver yeah, here. Yeah, I can really see the adventurer influence uh, yeah. in this, that idea of an explorer who's yeah. going and delving into different places. Yeah. I also mean, the pants. I was gonna say with boots like this. Consider you're... the pants. Yeah, yeah, seriously, like the first time as a hunter, I'm jealous of warlocks. Congratulations, warlocks, you did it. <laughs> uh, let's see, up next, we've also got our friendly neighborhood Titan, I believe, with perhaps- one Titan looks good though. I like that Titan does look dope. The helmet uh, and the chest piece looks all right. It's a very alien feeling 
feeling being jealous of Titans, but this is one time All right. and summon that feeling, honestly. The boots look cool. Uh, Titans out there, make sure you go ahead and start getting your I would say the Titan looks better, but the Warlock uh, looks... I ugh. can't wait to see start running around the tower. Hunter? It's pretty solid. And then, last but very not least, my fellow Hunters <sighs> are going to be able to go ahead and feast. Uh, we've got another uh, set of ornaments. It reminds me of D1, um, so again, it's not as really bad. Kind of that I'm not excited, but it looks all right. Going for to theme for this solstice in particular. And plus with an expanded sandbox of all the goodies that you folks have been working on to go ahead and have us go ahead and tear through it with. Uh, we are very appreciative of it. I'm, but, I'm not yeah. I'm not excited. Kind of a quick look at what's at all. Solstice. Um, <laughs> I'm just not excited at all. But yeah, I mean, honestly, that's kind of the main set of topics uh, for today. Nice. We're going to go ahead and scan Twitch chat very briefly to make sure we can go ahead and grab any questions. Um, but uh, Ryan, honestly, we're, we're now into, is this the second? Battleground? Yeah, we're in the second battleground yeah. on the second oh. counter right now. Wait, we're doing another um, battleground. So Dope. What we didn't see previously was uh, players were, when they finished the first battleground, the second battleground actually starts where the first battleground ends to yeah. continue wow. on your journey into the center of Nessus. Dude, that's um, really freaking that's cool. When you end battleground two, that's where you start for battleground three. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. So it, it cool. does but have a again, story that to it. That's dope. Nessus. Uh, sort of in that same vein, actually, one thing I, I've also kind of been wanting to ask selfishly is uh, a wise narrative director once said that stories are told in three acts. Uh, could you <laughs> yeah. tell us a little bit about what this episodic structure offers you guys? Like, what are you able to yeah. try that's different? So humans like Here we go. This is excuses right. now. Uh, when we think of a, uh, a story where you're kind of like in the same place, like doing the same thing, like sometimes uh, we want to make sure that our stories feel like they have shape and momentum to them. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, with uh, episode one, we can think of the shape of it kind of as starting in this place of uh, really like lighthearted it's a fun romp it's a fun adventure it was and way it down here down yeah. into a really dark place as all the doom happens in the background exactly. we're having fun with fail safe we get to yeah. play with that different the bleh, bleh, play with those shapes and yeah. play with that structure with each of our episodes um so in episode two in episode three it may start at different places and the energy may take you in different ways yeah. we got to really experiment and play around with what are we introducing narratively which in enables us to add things like a focus on Fate 14 for Act 2 uh, or uh, different ways that the, the battlefields may change as we're going through. Yeah. Um, humans like stories that have shape to them uh, and that's what a really uh, well-defined act structure allows us to do. Yeah. Okay. It's exciting to see, honestly, as we've just get yeah. started here in Echoes and with, with uh, Episode 2 on the way, but we'll talk more about that at a later date. Worry not. Mm -hmm. We've got plenty to dive into with Act, Act 2 right in front of us. Um, but uh, as far as my, uh, my, my agenda goes, I think actually we've thankfully hit kind of the, the primary bulk of the show. Um, Did I touch briefly on the oh. ability stuff? That's Please. Yeah. Yeah, oh, here there. comes yeah, the abilities. Yeah. yeah, we've been monitoring uh, feedback in PvP. Here it comes. Here's your nerfs. Prismatic Hunters. And particularly the two pain points around Swarm Grenades and Threaded Spectre. So we're bringing both of those down yes. into line. Yeah. Uh, uh, we've got a couple of PvE changes coming, and this is Titan stuff. It's sort of previewing some Titan changes that, that are going to come Ooh! in future release. So Titan's actually uh, going to maybe get a buff. The doom damage of the supers, Twilight Arsenal, mm -hmm. and Hammer of Soul. So those should both be a lot more competitive. That's right, yeah. Hammer of Soul, Titans Rejoice. Mm -hmm. Also, I sell Titan like actually that, useful. Arsenal, so if those could keep existing, I'd be a very happy camper. Yeah. Uh, also, we got a question from chat. Uh, Freeboop asks, uh, probably one for you, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, are you guys still evaluating the interactions of the combo on Edge Transit, or will you swap from Envious Assassin to Cascade Point and a, a 24 magazine while you still have Cascade Point? Uh, yeah, so we mentioned a few weeks back that we're going to be adjusting that. Um, it ended up needing a code change, uh, which is oh. typically a little bit slow, slower to roll out, but sure. that fix is still coming. So uh, if you missed out on getting that, um, that perk combination, uh, that is not going to be an exploit that continues to work. Excellent. Ah, uh, right. there it is. There's the nerf. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think thankfully that as we watch our, our <laughs> steadfast. They, they of cut, it like, okay, cut it off. Okay, cut it off. Here through uh, the battlegrounds, I think. Um, that's kind of the uh, the high and low of our show, everyone. Of course, we wanted to go ahead and make sure as we dive into the uh, the events of Act Two, uh, as we go to get pardon me, prepare to conclude Act One. Uh, we wanted to make sure that all of you had a sense of what was coming. And again, a reminder: this launches next week on July 16th. A uh, quick reminder of the topics we covered. Uh, of course, we're going to go ahead and remind you that the Bungie Foundation folks are doing some amazing work. Go Very ahead and check nice. our code and check out what they're up to. Otherwise, Act Two arrives next week. With it, you'll have these three new battlegrounds, two launching with the first week, 
the third arriving on the second week, new weapons joining the sandbox, new artifact mods for you, go to, for you to go ahead and unlock. Uh, and of course, Solstice will be joining us uh, later on into the, uh, into the act. Um, but otherwise, uh, before we go, I of course want to make sure that we take a chance to go ahead and thank our amazing cast here. Thank you so much for joining us today and telling us about what's to come. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks, Abby. Yeah, appreciate the time. Uh, to our amazing team of playtesters in the background, Mitch, Justin, and Peyton, uh, thank you very much for doing the proverbial heavy lifting. To the amazing team here, producers in house, they go ahead and put this all on. Uh, thank you all so much. Honestly, we always appreciate it. Very and nice. Last, but of course, not least, to all you guardians out there, thanks for taking the time to join us today. Uh, we'll see you all very soon. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each take other. Take care of yourselves. Also. All right. What did I think about that? Well, first off, I got to fix this. Uh, game game chat uh, because I don't want to be blasting my ears and I'm like two seconds so overall I think it was a uh, there was some good good things in there I'll give you that there was definitely good things uh, we first off Titans getting buffed finally that was a big pain point PvP you got your your nerf that you've been wanting uh, people in PvP they're tired of hunters we know that nerf is coming sorry rest in PCs I haven't been playing PvP, so I don't know. Don't care. Not my deal. I don't care. So I've been playing the other games. So it won't affect me. Uh, nerfs to PvE flinch. I was wondering how he was able to use the sniper and not be flinched to the moon. We saw in-game he was able to stay focused with Whisper of the Worm and be taking a crap ton of damage. So I would say it's significant and change. We know that reserve swapping is a thing that is annoying to do. They're nerfing it. You can't do it anymore, but they are reducing the cost of reserve mods, which is huge. And they're increasing the general reserve mods, like the MO capacity anyways, which is also huge. I think that is a, it's a W across the board, in my opinion. I knew they're gonna nerf that eventually. It, for those that did not mind swapping and who are upset about it, I'm sorry. But that was huge, that was a huge change. What's up, Bashar? Um, now, to the actual seasonal content, the artifact mod, why is it solar? We had solar all last season. I'm glad we have snipers now, which is great. We've got sniper mods, but I'm so confused why we have solar and like they love solar. It's weird. All right. Now the real deal, the real big boy stuff. The seasonal content. This experiment where they're allowing you to just play from beginning to the end of act two. That's great. I love that. Finally, they took feedback but there's still the feedback that I did not see that was reassuring to me was the fact that the content of the missions are actual mini missions and not talk to XYZ, stand around, collect items, do this item, do this item, and that's the mission. There was nothing to show. Now, there was a new activity. I will give them credit. They introduced two battlegrounds plus Two activities that is huge for an episode. That is huge. But I challenge you to stop and think. We would have four seasons. Four seasons in one year. They're removing a season and they're making three acts. If you're going to tell me that ever we're going to continue to get more activities in one episode then it is going to be more than four seasons worth of stuff and i will tell you that yes an episode is worth your bacon at least in the, the activities now there's going to be at least four in act two we're going to have a total of four activities to play with because there's two battlegrounds and then the enigma code and then the basic uh, protocol breach protocol and we have an ex exotic mission coming out and at, we don't even know what's in act three if they introduce even more content 
I would say it's better, but I still have, I would say that is worth your money, but I'm still going to give feedback and criticism if the missions themselves are just chase. X, Y, Z, talk to this person. That's just my feedback. That's it, being critical. Outside of that, this does kind of give me some hopium. You know, if they're introducing more activities that are stacking on top and if that's going to be the new way for every episode then we are going to get, end up with more content than we ever did with seasons which is a plus and they've like i said they've removed my biggest gripe which is drip fed now you're going to be able to just do it at least for this act which is fantastic i'm mr gaming counselor hit that like button comment down below and subscribe to the channel as always don't forget to game out. Huzzah!